this is a conference that I attended uh, called Mojo Fest 2018. And this, I'm just really going to try and sum up this three day conference for you <laughs> in 30 minutes uh, or, or, or less. Essentially, Mojo is mobile journalism. Okay, so what's mobile journalism? Mobile journalism, in essence, is shooting stories with a smartphone. So what's, what's a story? A story can be a photographic story. It could be just, it could be a series of photographs. Whenever we go, we've got a, a photographer in the room, I always say to them, make sure that you shoot the story. If it's the Secretary General making a speech to a thousand people and we've just got a close up of him, it's not the story. So we need, you know, we need the whole story, essentially. We need to show that the, the, the people were there. We need to, you know, perhaps a different angle. We need to shoot them from different angles. And, and the opportunity to do that uh, is sometimes limited. Um, and then as we'll talk about, so sometimes you've got to make your own opportunities. And basically, I, I, I said, could I go to Mojo Fest in Galway in Ireland? It's actually the fourth conference that has been on. I think, I, I think I've attended three. So when I said, could I attend a conference in, in Galway, Ireland, um, most people would have thought it probably looked like this. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, actually it looked more like that. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Although I did have to shoot the other one for research purposes. So um, there we had a lot of uh, different uh, speakers, there were panel sessions, there were uh, uh, several hundred participants uh, from all areas of media uh, pr production, from web, uh, TV, radio, um, a lot of journalists, a lot of young people there, but people from all over the world, and they were essentially sharing their knowledge and experiences of Mojo. So from now on, that's it, Mojo. So just think about Mojo, uh, mobile journalism. So um, in all in all its different aspects, uh, why? Seventy five percent of photography is being in the right place at the right time. One of the things by having a small portable device that you can just quickly be there telling stories, basically, um, it says seventy five percent of photography is being there at the right place at the right time. The best camera is the one that you have in your hand. So, I mean, that's it. People will talk about, oh, wow, you know, what have you got? Have you got a Canon 5D? Have you got a, a, a Nikon? Have you got blah, blah, blah. The best camera is the one that you have in your hand. And these are all quotes that I, I picked up there. Uh, I've got a whole book, book of uh, 60, 90 pages of notes. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, uh, this, and these are one of them. And if it is in within five meters, you can film it on an iPhone. Okay, so you might notice we've got a camera filming over here. We've got this camera filming over here. So, and by the way, um, I would encourage you uh, to take your phones out if you want and film and shoot and so you can take a photograph while you're here. Just, you know, uh, take, you know, film any of this, put, you know, film anything that, that I'm putting up on the board because that's exactly what I did. Essentially, when I was there throughout, I was taking photographs of the, uh, of all, everything that was happening. So what, what, uh, what is uh, your smartphone? This was more for the, uh, the, the sort of the camera geek, things like uh, um, vocal processors, rehearsing partners. I mean, rehearsing partner is, you know, uh, the, the, the apps that might help you to rehearse your performance as a, as a uh, as a presenter, let's say, a gimbal level, you might not even know what a gimbal is. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, something that makes your camera look smooth and that kind of thing. So uh, special effects creator, I mean, there are all sorts of apps in there. Script reader, you can have your phone read to you the script. Um, uh, shot lister, release form, uh, basically you can, you can shoot somebody and say, look, do you accept that, that everything that we're about to do will be, you know, used in perpetuity um, and, uh, and everything that... Uh, uh, that you say may be taken down in Evans and used against you. Or, you know, uh, a microphone, of course, to do podcasts, uh, audio mixer, location scouter, green screen checker, etc. What we're talking about here is not that the iPhone is going to be replacing everything that we carry, but this is usually what I'm struggling <laughs> through uh, an airport with. And just to give you an idea, and this is very minimal, basically, but basically in here, so we've got... Uh, a photographic camera with a long lens and a wider lens and a video camera and radio microphones and batteries. This is actually only half full. Um, and, uh, and then basically it would also have the charger, the headphones. Uh, a, this here is um, 
a little um, Osmo basically where we do shots, we're moving shots and that kind of thing as well. So, but actually this, this is, this I connect, I do connect up to a mobile phone, but only as a screen on that. Um, and then we would have tripod <laughs> and uh, camera stands and some of the stuff that we sent through essentially. And then, then what we're kind of talking about here is this. So uh, that's, that's kind of what we're, what we're looking at in terms of the, the difference between the two. That's not to say that this is the only thing that you might need. You might also need a light, so as opposed to a very big light, basically, on that. But this one was, as you can see, it's pretty powerful for just a small little light here. And this is what we use for Facebook Live, for example. Um, and, uh, you know, as I say, you may just use a very small, you know, little selfie stick as well. But, I mean, sometimes I just literally walk around just with that. You, this looks like an oversized condom, but it is, it is not. It is actually an emergency battery charger for your phone because what you're most likely to do is run, is run out of battery on your phone or you can obviously, as you know, you can have a, a special case for your phone that has a battery in it. And this has also got 32 gigs of memory in it for the iPhone as well. So these are the kind of things that, that, uh, um, that we're talking about in terms of Emojo. So who was at the conference? The BBC journalists, I mean journalists from other places as well, but BBC will I'll come back to in a second. Photographers, um, uh, vloggers, uh, documentary makers, etc. But who could be uh, there? Obviously I, I was there, but who could be filming Mojo Us? And I'm not talking about filming also photography as well. Duncan Stone was from the BBC. They just set, set out a pilot programme to <laughs> Um, uh, empower uh, j j journalists and, and to, well, to give them the a mojo kit that they can take with them, perhaps sometimes in addition to, uh, usually in addition to the kit that they have, but, but that might be, and these are the kind of qu things, the uh, comments that he was making essentially that first of all they had to identify what phone they had because there are all sorts of apps that might come be on an iPhone app, my iPhone, or some of them might be on an Android, etc. So um, some might be on a, you know, a Google P2, or you know, there's a Samsung, or th those kind of things. So you've got to really try and um, identify that. Uh, the kits would be issues. So you had to decide: was it as small as that, literally? I mean, you know, just a microphone. Uh, I mean, I'm wearing a radio mic here, which is connected up there. You can also get a similar kit for this. Uh, um, over here, but this this is literally this morning I discovered that I wanted to show you actually, which I didn't show you just then, but there's a little tiny uh, clip here which which goes onto the um, onto a, uh, a a tripod, any kind of tripod basically, um, and that holds your camera steady. I mean, the the main thing is obviously trying to get get uh, steady shots, so hold your phone steady on that. And because I didn't want, didn't, didn't have a, the, the specific adapter to that, I just put that on a light and I put a little bag on there. So, I mean, you, sometimes you need to improvise, basically. Two-channel audio, that's if you're interviewing somebody. Uh, you, need, you need to hear the, the interviewer and the interviewee. And, and, and those were the kind of, the, those are the, were the kind of uh, uh, objections that they were getting. But funnily enough, a lot of people now have started big and are now shrinking down. And also the, the, how to get the stuff back to base. With Mojo, you can get closer. So, uh, I mean, I showed you the big long lens here, and essentially, you know, the only way to um, to replicate that with a with a mobile phone is with your feet. So you have to literally zoom with your feet. Now, obviously, it's not always a uh, it's not always a possibility, but it's, but in, in if you can, obviously, you need to zoom with your feet. So I just need I just really wanted to just you know you to be thinking about things that. You, when you might be somewhere and you might be able to tell a story in some way or another, gather some part of the story. And it could be, as I say, that we're all, we're all just helping in terms of gathering that story. So you might be, you know, the other side of the room and you might find a great shot or you might, you know, you might be out, you know, you know after the meeting or whatever it might be and you might find that you've just got something and then just give it to us. I mean, as I say, it, we, it, we, we can only say no in terms of putting it up. So, but it might help to be able to supplement everything on that. Collecting creative content from different outlets. Uh, one of the, the uh, examples that he gave was speed and access to the uh, royal wedding. They just were attended the royal wedding recently. They had some journalists in the crowd literally with iPhones. They were interviewing people in the crowd and the way they got the shots back was just with 4G or with open Wi-Fi. So they were able to then put that into the package, into the final package, and that's the thing that we're talking about. <laughs> so they didn't even sell the six o'clock news, they shot the piece in the office, they didn't notice. And as they say, 50% uh, of, um, uh, of 60 plus crews in the UK are now using, 
um, mojo in their kit. 24-hour project, as I said, there were lots of people speaking, and I'm trying to compress three days into 30 minutes, but basically they, uh, this, this is an organization documenting humanity to make a difference. Now, they started off in, in 2012 uh, with a very very small project basically and here uh, they this is 2018 they've got now 4,280 photographers in 850 cities in 104 countries and 25,000 uh, uh, plus photos shared online what it is basically is one photograph every hour by these photographers in their city so they're showing something about their city and it's something which it, st it struck me that it was something that we could possibly get involved with in, in, in one way or another i had a very brief brief uh, uh, chat with um and so who was the, uh, uh, the, the the chap who was speaking here but to say it's something that we could we could follow up but it eventually you know t telling stories about icts they were actually they were involved in, in uh in several, with several NGOs in 2016, and you can see basically that they've gone up. This is a, a photographer whose photographs have appeared in big, big billboards all, all around uh, the world. They are uh, um, shot with an iPhone 6, and there's one with, the, with the, some red balloons, and she took some beautiful photographs. But she talked about this is on the border of Mexico, and, and getting some, some amazing photographs there. Um, and uh, the more stories being told equals awareness and uh, change. So sometimes just having a very small kit enables you to tell a story that is not worthy in inverted commas here. This is the normal production uh, uh, process normally for to make a documentary, pre-production, production, production post-production distribution. Basically with Mojo, you're talking about getting the gear in your hand, uh, you know, shooting with your iPhone, editing your iPhone and sharing on YouTube, Facebook or Vimeo. Of course, as I say, it takes a little bit of uh, practice before you get to that stage. Lenora Suara, so this who I was talking about before, she did one story in three formats. So as I say, she, she did this 50 minute documentary. Um, and uh, again, if you look her up, you'll, you'll find her there. And, the, and she, then she cut it into three different ways and she's won all sorts of awards there. Uh, basically looking at one long form, one short form and one very short form video. So things, things to think about there. And she says um, that shooting with Mojo is like a hot air balloon. You never know when you're going to land. Fruit Juice Bar Advantage, Marcel Andervert. He is from, um, from uh, SFR, actually. And this was quite an interesting little moment. Basically, he talked about the Fruit Juice Bar Advantage and essentially being the stealth, the stealth of having a mobile phone in your hand. And I, I actually practiced this, a little bit. I'll tell you about it a little bit later, but um, recently. Um, but here he was at the right place, uh, obviously, Davos. And uh, if you look at all the, that's where all the other photographers were. They were all corralled behind this little red line there. And he was able to get this. So I use this to come to care. Can you come Can you slide in? So you are okay. come. Just come and what's, what's your message to the walls, Mr. President? Peace and prosperity. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> So there you go. It's not breaking news, but however, you know, as I say, the fruit juice bar advantage is when you have some drinks at the fruit juice bar and you don't get sent away by security because they don't assume that a guy with a phone could possibly be a TV journalist. So, um, as I say, and he drew us a little diagram here of where he was, <laughs> which was just nicely placed here when Trump came in, and this is where everybody else was. Now, I had my own sort of little fruit juice bar moment recently when I was in the Dominican Republic and we had the ex-first lady vice president to... Uh, uh, come, come in to the, uh, the building. This is, these are all shot on, uh, on the iPhone, by the way. Even the shots that I didn't shoot, there are a few which you'll see there, like these, I shot on a screen with my iPhone. So, uh, but um, nobody, I mean, I just literally walked around Santo Domingo and uh, with a police escort um, and uh, my iPhone, but basically, but nobody, nobody cared, essentially, that I was, uh, and I was getting up pretty close to people without any issues at all, but nobody, nobody batted an eyelid, essentially. But it also shows people using the mobile phones here. This is not what the conference was like, by the way. <laughs> this, this is just two hours prior, two hours prior to the conference. But you see, I mean, you got tracking shots right up close into people there. And, um, and we were basically forbidden from getting close to the, the car. I actually reversed that shot, that was on our exit, but here we go. So basically there were lots of photographers all behind there, but I was here right up there and security guards weren't pushing me away basically. And I managed to get this lovely little shot of Mr. Sanu having his back patted by the <laughs> vice president. So, so, and I was just literally just there, just following it through, you know, and so, um, so there you go. So I wasn't the only person shooting uh, with a mobile phone at, uh, at the CBS uh, 2018. I don't know who this was, but they were shooting Facebook Live and they were shooting a, uh, um, 
uh, they were shooting the video as well. And of course, the um, vice president also got in on the act with um, with <laughs> with a selfie there. So it just shows that you know even the vice president of the Dominican Republic is um, is uh, a mojo journalist. <laughs> Again, uh, I thought to be it was an interesting th uh, little slide dice to share here. The camera is how we engage in the future. Input to all social media technologies is the camera. So. Um, so that means that we can all be contributing to that. And this is one of the shots I just, of course, I shot this with my iPhone just uh, from where I was sitting. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show you also the, the gender represents, uh, the red gender mix there, essentially, uh, which is a little bit, um, little bit different um, to, uh, to ITU. And uh, <laughs> that's uh, usually what we, we look like. I mean, it's not too bad, but... So here we go. So anyway, there were lots of people talking all about uh, the different ways of the, how you can do it uh, in terms of apps. Filmic Pro is what we're filming here at the moment with on that phone there, um, and it's very good for filming. It allows you to adjust, the f to hold the focus, to, um, to uh, be able to do a lot of the things that these cameras are doing. Some of, the, some of them are literally physically using the apps that are on the, their phones as well. Um, and uh, Ferrite is good for recording audio as well. It's a little um, sound recording studio in your pocket. Filmic Pro, everything one was coming back. And Luma Touch, which is, you can just about see it here. It's, it's uh, an editing tool which you can use on your, on your uh, iPad. I'm not saying, as I say, you're all going to go off and do this, but it's things that you, you, you can think about and things that you could think about empowering other people to do. Um, and then this chap here told us in about um, uh, 10 minutes exactly all the hundreds of apps that he had on his, on his phone. Let's say Filmic Pro, I've told you about LumaFusion is an editing one. Ferrite is a sound editing one. Intro Mate allows you to create little intros on your phone. All of this could be done on your phone or on your, on your, on your uh, iPad if you've got one or on uh, your laptop, it, 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 you, there are other, obviously other ways of doing it too. Uh, font size, you can actually draw your own little font, um, which I'm sure Jesus wouldn't like, but basically uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a matter of, uh, um, uh, be, you could you know, adapt things, and Clippomatic basically, um, it, it also you can, you can look, look that up. So mobile to mobile telephone, uh, mobile to mobile, Story strategy. This is Philip Bromwell again, and he was talking about make me feel, make me think, give me voice. And when he goes to do a, to, to film a story, this is what he's thinking about. These are the three things that he's thinking about: make me feel, make me think, give me a voice. Because he's you're basically looking at, you know, obviously empowering people. Um, and then we were talking about mobile journalism roadmap here. But this is the fourth conference that we talked about Mojo, obviously, and uh, so no, it wasn't the end. It's not the end of the road for Mojo. That pe you know there was an optimism here, people getting started. I mean, some, sometimes it was it was like being at a sort of St Steve Jobs uh, big uh, presentation uh, for the technical for, uh, for on the technical side. But but as I say, when we're looking at content, basically putting the audience first, uh, using the tool to navigate this evolving landscape, and we're thinking outside beyond. TV. I mean, half of us are not watching uh, watching the news on TV anymore. At least I'm not. I'm, you know, it's all on the phone, um, and there are all sorts of ways. There was also the, there was a big discussion: Snapchat versus Instagram. You, you may may not know. I, I would have to get my 15 year old daughter in to explain it to you because I did sit her in the car last night and try and tell me the difference between because there was all of this going on, but they were from Snapchat and Instagram aficionados. Uh, basically, these were some of the quotes that are going on here. But as I say, literally, if if, if you want a session on that, I will get my 15 year old because she is 100% uh, au fait with both of these, but they are very, very similar, um, although some uh, very similar um, uh, features in both of these, uh, but, but as I say, one's lame, apparently, and one's... <laughs> what's the word they use? Anyway, it'll come, it'll, it'll come back. Dope, there we go, one's dope. So, um, using Snapchat as a content creation tool, people telling stories from their own perspective, Snapchat stories, mobile only, audience contributing to the narrative, uh, Snapchat users can subscribe to channels. There's 15 seconds that basically millennials will take it, so my, my talk here is too long. Snapchat maps, you can, ge you can geolocate uh, where your story might be, so there are things that we could do. But now, okay, this might not be working for, uh, I don't know, BR meeting, but it might work for girls in ICT, or it might, you know, there are various things that we could be thinking about to engage young people in. And if you want to bring people in and, 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 uh, and show them, and it's the lean forward experience. Does anyone know what the lean forward experience is? Yes? yes? That's it. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay. It's a leaning forward experience. All of our, our, our children will be going to chiropractors in later on years, but literally everybody will, will, is, is leaning forward into their phone. Native to mobile phone, Instagram, same kind of thing. Instagram content creation tool. 
The New York Times, which I was looking at yesterday, actually, is on Instagram as well. And there it's quite interesting because they're, then they're posting photographs there on Instagram and it's also then funneling you in to, the, to a longer story, a blog and various things like that. So we, things that we could think about for ITU News. Instagram stories are mobile only. I, uh, Instagram stories, I can't remember whether it was dope or whether it was... Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, one of these is great. Uh, and Instagram users can subscribe to IGTV, which is Instagram television. People are putting up to an hour, apparently, uh, of, uh, um, of them recording themselves talking about putting on makeup. 15 seconds, <laughs> millennials will take it. IGTV, but we could talk, be talking about something else. We could, you know, but anyway, lean forward experience, native to mobile phone. Instagram's owned by Facebook, so there you go. What's next in terms of uh, 360 video, VR, AR? I mean, they've been talking, there was a lot of talk about 360 video last year. Uh, this is what 360 video used to look like, uh, and that is quite true, actually. And then basically augmented reality as well. So, I mean, all of these things, again, um, the, the, there's really just not quite enough time, but basically live streaming is live streaming over, um, and the live streamings are really easy to do badly so i mean that's that's the point that i think you need to, to to be careful of why are we doing it more live what's the advantage of going live what we do capture a moment can we answer the question get direction have authenticity that we couldn't have any other way and what are we doing well how are we adding to the understanding of it and don't just do it because it's easy don't so we need to think about when we're doing live live uh, uh, videos on there. Show what's moving or you move. There's different technical elements here. Basically from the field, discover something at the same time as the viewers. So, you know, you're walking through thinking about this live thing and, oh, well, let's, okay, let's come on, let's meet uh, somebody here or, you know, oh, I see that something's going on here. So walking through a door or whatever it might be. So similar things that we just did in, in Girls in ICT uh, Facebook Live recently. Uh, and this was the chap who, uh, who, who was talking to about us on that, Peter Stewart, journalist on that. So not everyone with an iPhone is a journalist. I mean, I think to implement this, uh, I say the start is literally obviously taking your phone out and just practicing and just doing things, you know, but every, every th there's a million and one lessons on your iPhone that literally your tutor could be on your iPhone, you know, that if you just literally look up, how can I do this? How do I film this? Or how do I, how do I photograph this? It's there, do you know, and people say to me, oh, how do I, uh, I said, well, just Google it, you know. So it's, it, is literally, it is literally as simple as that. But we could also identify, you know, us, uh, us up in the upper echelons of, uh, um, of power here, um, like me, basically we can identify people that are suited to the task. So we need to think about that. We need to think about, you know, I say anybody, you know, if you know somebody, Taylor, or if you know whoever it is, basically, you know, we could think about people that we could say in different countries to say, okay, well, look, you know, you've got, you know, we'll give you a, a nominal fee, or we'll, you know, or just con, you know, contribute, blah blah blah, or we'll find somebody to partner with that on that, that that could support us, and that could, you know, there's uh, there was a company, uh, there was some uh, an organisation called Open in Rotterdam, basically that's working with young people and training them up as journalists, etc., and training them up as journalists to use mobile phones. Basically, opening up communities, giving them a voice, and it could be micro local or hyper local, and that's what, as I say, Open in Rotterdam are doing basically. They're t telling very very small stories, but they're fascinating stories, just about little, you know, just about somebody in a, a sh you know a, a supermarket or a, you know or a grocery store, you know, in Rotterdam or something like that but you know they've got their story because they're coming in here they've just you know they've arrived they've been here for the last uh, you know two years from Afghanistan and blah 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 and whatever there is and they and they're gathering the community together and they're playing cards or whatever it might be I would I would urge you that whenever you travel on a mission just create some content wherever you go and it doesn't have to be on a mission you can be somewhere else you can be but do create some content and share it with us I mean there were all sorts of photographic uh, workshops that I attended basically here and it did give me some new inspiration it's, it, this is just an ordinary shot that I you know, said but go out and shoot shadows and I hadn't thought about shooting shadows before so um, there's lots of things. So there was, there's me shooting my own shadow. Also di auto um, didactic, but also uh, uh, auto retrato as well. So basically, there. Then, then they said, talk, think about also angles, and so think about the infinity point, Lee, and that's the infinity point. So I literally just walked out of the conference center and just literally out there and just found the infinity point, and just I mean, I just turned it to black and white because it looks nicer. Um, and then after the conference, I was just walking about and and you know just just found just found things and just there, I put a bit of saturation on there, but that was it. That was you know I did do anything else and there's another infinity point there but there are things that we can do and things in, in terms of perspective new inspiration there we go that's uh, the this, the, uh, the sun setting on Galway there so um, that is pretty pretty much it I will finish off here uh, uh, with uh, just a, a little uh, tiny uh, video because we could, couldn't leave you without a bit of music from Galway